Look, I know we all love to joke about Ubuntu being bloated or calling it a noob dist- But let us be real, it's still one of the biggest Linux distributions out there and incredibly relevant. So today we're diving into Ubuntu 25.10, codenamed the Questing Quarka. This is actually the last release before the next big LTS version, 26.04 which means it's packed with important changes both under the hood and visually. Let's break down everything that's new. First major change, and this isn't just Ubuntu, it's affecting most GNOME-based distros. Ubuntu is now Wayland only. Yep, no more X11 session for GNOME. Ubuntu followed GNOME's recommendation and removed the ability to launch X11 sessions. If you install other desktop environments, you can still run X11 sessions, but the GNOME session. That's Wayland only now. No going back. This was pretty much expected. GNOME is doubling down hard on this, and by GNOME 50, X11 code will actually be stripped completely from GDM and GNOME. I really don't see Ubuntu maintaining their own fork just to keep X11 alive. So yeah, Ubuntu GNOME is Wayland forever now. Ubuntu 25.10 brings some refinements to the Yaru theme. Nothing crazy major, but noticeable if you pay attention. They've added new icons for some apps. Since they switched to Loop as the image viewer, that icon got refined. Same deal with the new terminal app. It's called Tixis, but Ubuntu just calls it Terminal, and it has a slightly updated icon. The trash icon changed a bit too. You'll also see revamped icons for System Monitor, Firmware Updater, GNOME Builder if you install it, and GNOME software. Honestly, these are pretty subtle changes. To my eyes, they look similar, but just a bit sharper. The status icons in the top bar also got improved sharpness. When your battery's charging, you LLC more detailed battery status indicators, with that little green charging bar growing as it fills up. There's also a new spinner animation that's smoother and less jittery. Again, refinements rather than massive overhauls. But I still think Yaru looks solid. It takes the Advaita look and adds more color, depth, and contrast. Plus, you can change that orange accent color now if you're not a fan. If you're using the Ubuntu dock in non-panel mode, just as a dock, not a side panel, the corner radius has been improved to match the right-click context menu. The outline now has the same radius, and it should match with various Yaru icon radii too. Just makes everything look more consistent. Ubuntu switched some default apps around. Loop is now the default image viewer, just like GNOME has been doing. It's honestly fantastic. Supports multi-touch gestures for swiping and zooming, has basic editing tools to crop, change aspect ratio, rotate, and flip images. Simple, but effective. I actually thought Ubuntu already used Loop by default, so this surprised me, but it's a good move. There's also a new terminal app called Tixis or just Terminal in Ubuntu. It's got all the settings you'd expect, color profiles, font, and cursor options, keyboard shortcuts you can customize, and profile support. Really solid terminal, with a nice tab view that makes navigation between different programs easy. Good choice. Here's something that got removed, and it's a bit frustrating the startup app's application. This little launcher lets you configure which apps start when you boot up. Now it's gone. Instead, you have to set auto start on a per app basis. Want an app to auto start? Go to its app page in settings and enable the auto start permission. Honestly, I think this is a regression. Here's why you can't install the old graphical tool anymore. It's just not in the repos. You have to go in and out of every single app individually. There's no bird's eye view of everything that launches at startup. And you lose the ability to add custom commands or scripts that auto start. Before, you could add any custom script graphically. Now you have to do it through command line or create a desktop file manually and place it in your auto start folder. Not great. In the installer, there's one major change around hardware backed encryption. If you use your TPM chip for encryption, it now requires TPM 2.0, basically the same requirements as Windows 11. You can still set a passphrase even with hardware backed encryption for extra security. But keep in mind, this is still marked as experimental. So only use it if you're okay with potential data loss. Now, let's talk about what changed under the hood. And this is huge, but most users won't even notice. The new core utilities, those basic command line tools you use all the time, have been replaced with Rust versions. Commands like lsmv, cp, pseudo sort, 
they all still work exactly the same. Same options, same shortcuts. It's a drop-in replacement. For regular desktop users, you probably won't notice any difference. But if you've built complex custom scripts using advanced options from these utilities, you might want to test them. There have been some bug reports about performance issues or commands not completing, though most seem to be addressed now. Why make this change in 25.10? I think it's to test before the 26.04 LTS. If too many things break, they can revert it. If it works fine, it goes into the LTS. There are also some smaller changes under the hood. They've replaced the network time protocol utility with Crony, which does what you'd expect, keeps your clock synced over the network. They also replaced the old Inatramphus tools with Dracut. If you've used Fedora, you know Dracut. That's what Red Hat systems have been using. It's a more solid way of handling the init RAM file system. Quick explanation. When you load Linux, you first load an init RAM FS image. This initializes your environment, loads device drivers, makes sure your root partition can mount and boot, potentially decrypts your drive, then launches your full Linux system. Ubuntu was using init RAM FS tools scripts for this. Now it's Dracut. Ubuntu also updated how they collect telemetry. Before you panic, it's still completely optional. You can still disable it during installation. If you didn't, just run Ubuntu Insights Consent False and it's turned off. You can also check exactly what data has been collected. My only complaint, it's still opt out by default instead of opt-in. I wish they'd flip that, but the tool itself doesn't seem to collect more than before, so it's not particularly invasive. Ubuntu 25.10 ships with GNOME 47, which brings a ton of improvements. There are big improvements to Mutter, the window manager, and compositor. This includes multiple new Wayland protocols for better cursor handling, much better fractional scaling that should be way smoother. Fonts should look significantly better, and support for ICC color profiles if your display has one. Every GNOME release makes Mutter smoother and better. As the Wayland transition continues, you get more protocols to handle all the new features. The Do Not Disturb toggle is now straight in quick settings. It used to be in the time date pop-up, which made sense since that's where notifications were. But having it in quick settings with all the other toggles makes sense too. If you have multiple monitors or a monitor that supports brightness adjustment, you'll see multiple brightness sliders in quick settings, one for each monitor. This includes HDR monitors if you've enabled HDR in settings. The quick settings pop-ups also animate slightly differently now. Small visual change, but it looks nice. There's a huge accessibility win right from the login screen. There's a new accessibility button that lets you turn on or off various features like screen reader, zoom functionality, high contrast mode, though Ubuntu doesn't seem to have implemented this in Yaru yet, and large text option. This makes it way easier to actually log in if you have visual disabilities. On the lock screen, ULL now see a media control widget showing what S currently playing could be Firefox, with YouTube, Spotify, whatever. You get playback controls to skip tracks and play, pause without unlocking your computer. Pretty convenient. Nautilus got some love too. There's a new search pop-up with visual tag selection for file types. Looks really good, though I'll admit you can't multi-select tags, which would be nice. You also get a date range selector with a calendar instead of typing dates manually. Cut items now show with an outline and a cut icon instead of just being slightly translucent, way more visual. And their S, a new keyboard shortcut, C, T, R, L, plus period, that opens a terminal window right in your current directory. Super handy. Quick correction from my GNOME 47 review papers does support annotations and highlighting. I messed that up in my previous video, my bad. However, Ubuntu 25.10 does unseem to ship the latest version of GNOME. Calendar, it's stuck on version 46 instead of 47. This is frustrating because Calendar 47 has major accessibility improvements, making it fully usable with just a keyboard or assistive technologies. I honestly don't understand why Ubuntu ships certain app versions. They've got GNOME 47. Most apps are updated, but not all. Maybe it's theme related with Yaru breaking something. But then, fix your theme. Don't ship old versions. The text editor now remembers your sessions. Close the app with multiple documents open, and when you reopen it, all those documents come back in tabs, keeping your place in each one. 
Gnome Maps lets you click street names and numbers to save as favorites, but Ubuntu doesn't ship it by default. Gnome Camera now defaults to MP4 and H264 if you have the right plugins. Gnome software got way faster, but Ubuntu uses their own app center anyway. Gnome 47 added a donation banner in the About page, but Ubuntu removed it. I get why they want a unified Ubuntu product without confusing users about what GNOME is, but most Ubuntu users probably know what GNOME is, and this removes a donation opportunity for GNOME. I understand both sides here. If you use Remote Desktop to access GNOME, there are some solid improvements. It now supports multi-touch input use, a tablet to remote in and touch gestures work. There's relative mouse input support, which helps with gaming over Remote Desktop and you can set up additional virtual monitors when remoting in these are solid improvements that work in Ubuntu too, since they're core GNOME features. As usual, you get package updates across the board. Linux kernel 6.11, latest system that GNOME relies on updated NVIDIA drivers and Mesa driver updates. It's a solid update overall. Let's be real though, not everything here is perfect. The X11 removal means if you loved X11 over Wayland, you'll need another distro or desktop environment. The new Core Utils replacement means if you have super complex custom scripts, you should double check them. The Rust alternatives should be drop-in replacements, but verify to be safe. The startup app's removal is, in my opinion, a bad change since the replacement doesn't have full feature parity. And the app version mismatches are annoying. Why doesn't Ubuntu ship the complete GNOME 47 experience? It's frustrating that Calendar is stuck on 46, but if none of those concerns affect you, Ubuntu 25.10 is a really good release. You get newer drivers and kernel, better performance, and all the GNOME 47 improvements. If you're an Ubuntu user who doesn't just stick to LTS releases, this is worth upgrading to. Just make sure those under the hood changes don't break your workflow. That's everything new in Ubuntu 25.10.